my introduction to 3D was dance, and I needed a language that could film dance, and Pina and I were looking for that for 20 years, and we didn't make the film for so long because I felt film was just unable to do justice to dance until 3D came up, and I realized that was the solution. So I really badly needed 3D. So I was lucky that I got introduced to 3D <clears throat> through another art form that had this affinity to it. And uh, because we did all these pieces first, and some of them were very complicated, we had shots that lasted one hour with a hundred different camera positions on a crane, technically very demanding. So after the first few months of the shoot, I really thought I had seen it all. And I really thought I had a grip on what 3D was like. And then we went outdoors, and that was yet another chapter. But a chapter in the same direction of what 3D could do in terms of depth and in terms of space. So I thought I had a handle on it. And then we shot, almost as an afterthought, something very simple that you see quite often in the course of the film, you see these portraits of the dancers. We call them the silent portraits. And these, in comparison to everything we had done before, were about the most simple shots. There was just a person in front of the camera. And that was it. And so I didn't think that was going to be a revelation. I thought it was something necessary and important to add to the texture of the film. But only when we shot these shots, I realized that was the most thrilling part of the entire 3D experience. Because until then, really, in all these months, and in all the 3D films I had seen, I had not seen one phenomena in 3D, which is simply volume, that a body is round and that a body has altogether a different presence than you've ever seen it in cinema before. I had not seen that in Avatar, I had not seen it in any of the action movies, and I hadn't seen it in our own dance footage, this quality of 3D to show bodies and a person so differently. A person in front of the camera, you can really touch and you, the, the head is round and the nose is protruding and the shoulders are round. There is a physical presence that is unbelievable. And I, I, we shot these silent portraits with the dancers totally alone in front of the camera. The crew was gone. I wanted them to be alone. And I was hiding behind the camera and the 3D rig is quite big so I, they didn't see me. And I just had this little 3D monitor in front of me and the glasses on. And I really had goose pimples because these close-ups, that was the biggest thing we had done. That was, I felt the door that had opened for me to understand what 3D was all about. That it was about the presence of people in a very different way than the history of cinema had shown us. And that all these action movies are showing us so far. And ever since, I'm hoping that narrative film will be able to deal with that presence. But you can only do it if you really rely on your actors and if you make movies that are character driven. As soon as you have a movie that is plot driven, that option and that presence of the actor is useless. It's actually in the way. You don't want it because you don't want them to become so strong and to become so close to you. If you're telling a story and if your main deal is telling a story, you stick to the story and the characters are second fiddle. So in order to use the propensity of 3D really in order for storytelling, I think you'd have to start making very different movies in 3D. Intimate movies and family movies and love stories, but you'd have to stop making this one-dimensional, no-story blockbusters. They give you the language, but they give it to you void. 
and that's the problem with 3D at this moment. We're getting a new language and we start thinking it is void in itself, which it isn't. It's very, very full, but we haven't seen it yet. 